what we're seeing on our screen is the main website for the statewide park program round four 395.3 million is available and the application deadline is december 14 2020 a link to the online application system will be available here by august 2020 at that point you can start uploading draft application documents please scroll down to the bottom of this page and look for the technical assistance section in this section we have the community fact finder and the community fact finder handbook we will give you a live display of both of these tools please go to the community fact finder In this version, we will use the city of Santa Ana as an example. In this case, I do not have a predetermined project site, so I'm going to search the jurisdiction for an area that may be as competitive as possible. In this example, I'll simply enter Santa Ana, California. Okay. Now to move around in the jurisdiction, you can drag the blue um, pinpoint anywhere within the jurisdiction. So let's just say I'm interested in the um, east of the freeway. And I just want to go to look at a potential, uh, a potential park over there. Okay, so in this situation, um, there are two eligibility thresholds you want to be aware of. Uh, the first is the median household income. In this example, the income is above the threshold. The income here, as shown on your screen, is $81,096. So what is the threshold? If you look at the bottom right-hand side of your screen, where it says disadvantaged community, it provides the threshold. The key threshold for you to be aware of for this program is the $56,982 threshold. Okay, that is a eligibility requirement if, if the second threshold is not met. So what's the second threshold? The second threshold is park acres per thousand residents. As you can see in the bottom left corner of your screen, in this specific example, the parks per thousand residents is 1.39 acres. Okay, what's the threshold? The threshold requirement is below three acres per thousand residents. So in this example, the project site is actually eligible. You don't have to meet both thresholds. It has to be one or the other, either below the 56,000 median household income or below the three acres per thousand residents. It does not need to be both. Okay. Um, now let's go to, let's just say I want to go back to the other side of the freeway and I'm just exploring, looking at some options here and I move my pan and I come to this example. So in this example, the income is now $37,415 and the parks per thousand residents is 0.43 acres. So let's just pretend I've thoroughly searched the entire jurisdiction of Santa Ana and I've decided that this is the most competitive part of the community. Um, and I want to really see if I can find a project site within this area. So the next thing I want to do, if I found a project site that I do believe will be competitive, is I want to use the Community Fact Finder Handbook. So let's go back to our website and we'll look at the second tool. So the Community Fact Finder Handbook provides eight steps to review the data within the half mile radius and report any updates of park acreage that should be added or removed before you submit your final report in the application. It is very important 
that you follow the fact finder handbook rules and guidance before you proceed with planning your project. In fact, it's probably the most important thing you do at the beginning of your uh, planning process for your application is to follow the handbook and make sure that you find a project site that you believe meets all the rules in the handbook and that you can submit the final fact finder report to be both eligible and competitive. So the fact finder handbook will uh, give you some great visual tips and how to explain that. If you could please click on the fact finder handbook link and you'll see the cover. So our next step is we'll go over the uh, fact finder handbook and explain in more detail uh, what your review process will be before you decide on your final project site. Thank you. Please go to, to the next page. Fact Finder Overview. So this tool combines the California Protected Area Database with American Community Survey projections to calculate park acreage and demographic data within a half mile radius of all project locations in California. The use of the half mile radius is twofold. It helps steer, steer applicants towards placing projects in areas that meet the program's priority. And it also uniformly quantifies the ratio of park space per thousand residents, number of people below poverty, and the median household income in proximity to projects using the same data sources available statewide. If the radius were larger, it could encompass higher income areas or greater park acreage areas, which would disadvantage or disqualify many statewide applications. This allows for a fair and consistent process, and it gives technical assistance where finding this data would normally uh, provide complicated multi-layered research. Let's go to the next page, please. In the Fact Finder Handbook, there are eight steps to review the project area before finalizing the application. So we already covered step one, but we'll go through it. Um, the next is to um, step two and three is to make sure that you find an area that you uh, plan on applying for. You understand the Community Fact Finder data tools. You should understand what data um, type of uh, park land should or should not be counted as park acreage. You want to, step five, is you want to look for acreage that should or should not be counted. And under step six, you can actually report acreage that should or should not be counted. Under step seven, you will select a specific point of the project site for purpose of project selection criteria number one and two, and that is to find the most competitive numbers you can possibly find within your project site. So there's actually flexibility to, um, to, to work within your project site to find the best point possible. And then finally, under step eight, you will provide a final report in your application for project selection criteria number one and two. We will go through each step now. Please turn to the next page. So we already covered how to find um, the fact finder tool online. Please go to the next page. And under step two, we give different methods for how you can search a community, either by a specific address, or what we just did is we um, just uh, entered a city name and we uh, move the fact finder pin, pin tip throughout the jurisdiction. Please go to, to the next page. Okay, so now we have uh, an important step and that is to understand the data tools. 
there are three things this covers. Number one is what is the starting point of the half mile radius? Number two is what are the demographic and park acreage data sources? And number three is what is the green overlay which shows up? So we have arrows here that explains the green overlay is from California's protected area database. So if you find a uh, green overlay within the project area's half mile radius that you believe is not accurate, this handbook explains how to report a change to the green overlay through our office. And we will review every re request. So you do have the ability to provide updated park acreage information. The point origin of the half mile radius is the pinpoint of the uh, of the needle shown there. So you can move that pinpoint within your project site. Please go to the next page. So here we show you um, the three uh, sources of information that is needed for the project selection criteria. So in this example, for criteria number 2A, which is found on page 18 of the application guide, the income is $144,000. For criteria number 2B, found on page 17 of the statewide park program application guide, the number of people below poverty is 565. And for Criteria number one found on page 15 of the application guide, the park acreage is 2.05 acres per thousand residents. In this example, the project site is eligible because it's below three acres per thousand residents. The bottom of this page provides uh, the data sources that are used for this fact finder version. Please go to the next page. And finally, you can click on the green overlay and it will identify um, the acreage information. So you can compare the acreage uh, total to your records. And if there's a difference, uh, you, you can report that to us and we can look to see if the park acreage needs to be updated. We will cover this step in more detail soon. Please go to the next page. Oh, pause. Uh, on the bottom here, you'll see a green, uh, I'm sorry, a blue box. And the blue box is a key requirement for you to be aware of within each step. Here, we tell you to review the entire half mile radius and report acreage that should be either updated in terms of adding acreage or acreage that should be removed. Please consider both. You have to report both uh, um, additions or removal of acreage. Let's go to the next page. For step four, the next thing is to understand what type of land should or should not be counted as park acreage. Should be counted are land that contains all three elements that are listed here. Number one, the property includes a portion of outdoor open space. Number two, the property is open for authorized public recreational use with a formal recreation development, such as a trail. And number three, the property is owned by a local, state, or federal public agency for recreation. See the definition of park on page 74 of the application guide. Should not be counted. Land that should not be counted as park acreage includes land that does not include all three combined elements above, outdoor open space owned by a private entity, it's not owned by a local, state, or federal public agency, and finally school property that does not involve a joint use agreement and park signage for general public recreation 
is not considered a park. This is important because while we do recognize that some schools um, are not fenced and the public in concept can um, use the school, um, school property during non-school hours, if we considered every school as a park in California, uh, then the fact finder would uh, have a substantial increase of property that is considered parks, but are actually not designated as public parks. So for to make sure that uh, we have an accurate um, count of parks that are open to the general public, uh, schools that are not officially designated as a park should not be counted. Now, we have some common questions here. Um, please also pay attention to these questions for additional guidance of what should or should not be counted. Uh, one of the common examples here is the second question. Um, it is for federal or state land that is a forest or desert or mountain area. Uh, can that um, forest or desert or mountain area be removed from being counted? If it meets one through three above, then the total area will still be counted. For example, if there's an authorized trail or a campsite somewhere within the overall forest or desert or mountain area, then the land is counted. In this example, the purpose and function of the larger property is to provide for the public experience of enjoying nature through a trail or campsite. The publicly protected nature surrounding the trail is part of the trail's recreational experience. So again, make sure before you finalize what project site you will proceed with, make sure that you research the entire half mile radius for land that should or should not be counted as park acreage and report that to us before you move on with the project site. We will go to the next step on the next page, please. Step five, you will look for acreage that should or should not be counted. As I just mentioned, you will review the entire half mile radius, and this includes reviewing property with or without a green overlay. Because there may be a pocket park or a even a larger park that for some reason was never uh, discovered and should be added to the California Protected Area Database. In this step, we'll explain how to report acreage updates. The first is if you see land that could be a park uh, but is not in a green overlay, you'll follow these steps. The first step is to simply drive to the project property in question. Okay, so that's step number one. Or you can use Google Maps to get a street view, and this provides uh, the steps for how to use Google Maps and get a street view of the project property in question. Okay, again, you must report all acreage that should be added or removed as described in the blue box requirements. Let's go to the next page, please. Now, to report park acreage additional removal, step number six, you'll simply send an email to scorp at parks.ca.gov, include a description of the issue in the email, create a report using the community fact finder, place your pin tip on the property in question, then click the green get report tab and a PDF report will be created. Save the PDF report to your computer, like you would save a Word document, and then attach it in your email and send it to scorp at parks.ca.gov. If this is very close to the December 14th application deadline, you can include a copy of the re request in your application packet. You can do that under um, the, if you go to the application checklist, on page 11 of the application guide, you'll see a community fact finder 
report. And that is where you can place this uh, email to serve notice that you requested an update and the update is still being reviewed. If we get um, many requests right before the application deadline, we may not be able to make the updates in time for December 14th, 2020. For that reason, in the blue box requirements, we ask you to try to send the acreage addition or, or removal reports at least one month before the application deadline. Preferably, if you can send this by August, September, August or September would be great. Okay, let's go to the next page. Step number six continued is that what happens if you know there is park acreage that should be added but do not report it? Please be aware that we follow the same steps in this um, community fact finder handbook. Uh, we, we, the office will thoroughly review the half mile radius um, if we discover acreage that should have been reported, there will be a new report created with the pin located in the middle of the project site. And the new ratio of park acreage per thousand residents and the median household income will be added to the competition instead of the report that you submitted. So for this reason, it is the applicant's responsibility to thoroughly review the project's half mile radius before submitting the application packet. You can always ask questions if you're unsure about whether property should be included by emailing scorp at parks.ca.gov. Now, the second question is, what happens if I do report the addition or removal of acreage, but the update is not shown on the community fact finder by the application deadline. Number one is include a copy of the request in your application packet. If OGALS approves the request, you will be notified by email when the update is complete. You will then be able to submit a new fact finder report and the new fact finder report can be generated anywhere within the project site. So if you have a five acre project site, you can move your pin anywhere within the five acre project site to create a new report. And that is helpful because you'll have the new data available once the park acreage update has been made. Okay, so a reminder on number five is please try to send your update request at least one month before the application deadline, which should be at the latest early November is preferred. For these reasons, um, you do want to make sure that you report acreage that should be added or removed. Don't rely on us to do it because if it's not reported, we'll have to create the report for you at the end. It's better that you create the report. Please go to the next page. So, Step seven is about selecting a specific point of the project site for purpose of project selection criteria one and two. We'll cover this in the next four pages. The first thing to know is the pin tip must be inserted in the boundary of the project site, not one or two or more blocks outside of the project site. We'll give examples of this. As you move your pin tip within the boundary of your project site, there may be a competitive edge. You want to look for these eligible and competitive factors. Eligible is less than three acres per thousand residents, or the key word is or less than uh, 56,982 median household income. Now the competitive factors are that all statewide applications will be ranked based on the park acres per thousand people, project selection criteria one, median household income, project selection criteria number two, and number of people below poverty, 
which is project selection criteria number 2B. So in pages 13 through 16, on the next pages, you'll see examples of moving your pin tip within the project site to be both competitive and eligible. And we also give these examples based on whether it's a, a new park or a expansion of an existing park or a renovation of an existing park. Please go to the next page. Okay, so here we have an example. If you look at the visual on the right hand side, there's a blue boundary to represent, let's say it's a new park and that's the blue boundary. In the top example, you'll see uh, the income is above the threshold at $169,000, but the parks per thousand people are below three acres per thousand. So in this case, it is eligible. Now, a competitive point is in the bottom example, you'll see that the acreage drops down to zero per thousand residents and the median house and income also drops by a few thousand dollars. In this example, even though it's within the same project site, the bottom example is more competitive. So in this example, you would it would be recommended to use the bottom example. So play around with your project site and move your pin around the, the boundary of your project site to find the best point possible to generate your report. Let's go to the ne next example on the next page. In this example, we have a expansion and in the middle um, paragraph there, it explains that in this case, the expansion uh, involves a, a new playground and a greenway with a jogging path and exercise stations connecting a school to an existing park. In the top example, the project site is not eligible because it's above both thresholds. In the bottom example, the acreage drops down below three acres per thousand residents, making the site ex making the project site eligible. Let's go to the next page. Oh, but, um, to go back to the prior page, um, there should be a um, green um, a green um, linear um, greenway that that was added for an example. Um, so in this case, uh, I just want to be clear that the project involves a greenway and the pin was created in this example at the um, at the edge of where the greenway is proposed. Let's go to the next page, please. Okay, in this example, we have an existing park uh, project site. In the top example, the both the uh, park acres per thousand residents and the income is above the threshold, so it is ineligible. In the bottom example, the pin was moved within the boundary of the project site, and the site becomes eligible because it is less than three acres per thousand residents. Okay, let's go to the next page, please. And finally, we have a, um, a, a larger regional park. Um, in the top example, the uh, project site is ineligible as it is above both the income as well as the park acres requirement. And in the bottom example, although the park acres is above the thres threshold, the income is at $36,028, which is below the threshold of 56,982. So now the regional park becomes eligible. All right. So that, that explains how to uh, move the push pin within your project site to find an eligible project site, whether it's a new park, an expansion, or renovation of an existing park.
Let's go to the next page, please. The final step is to create and submit a final fact finder report for project selection criteria number one and two. After you complete steps one through seven in this handbook, you're ready to provide your final report. Look at the blue box requirement. Before you create the final report, make sure the pin tip is in the boundary of the project site, not one or two or three blocks outside of the project site. We will actually enter the fact finder report into a satellite interface which takes the office to the precise point where the fact finder report was created. We will also ensure that the pinpoint is in the boundary of the project site by reviewing parcel information and your site plan. On the bottom of the requirement box, you'll see how to create the final fact finder report. You'll simply move your hand cursor, click Get Report, and a window will appear. It may take a few moments. You'll, se you'll select Click Here and open it in a new tab, save it, and then you have your final fact finder report. Include the report in your application packet that is sent to us by the application deadline. Let's go to the next page, please. A few more common questions is, can you create more than one report? You can create as many reports as you like. However, only one report can be submitted in your final application. In this case, your application will be uploaded on our website by December 14th, 2020. Uh, we also note that the map on the fact finder, because it uses a different data source, uh, may have some different visuals. That's fine. We do not rely on the map on the report. Um, as previously mentioned, we actually enter the fact finder ID number into a satellite interface, which takes us to a satellite view of exactly where the fact finder was created, the fact finder report was created. If your project site is the same as a previous round three application, you have to create and submit a new report. Um, this 2020 Fact Finder version provides the most recent demographic data that is available. And finally, where do you include the Community Fact Finder report in the application? Please go to the application guide and look at the application packet checklist. The Community Fact Finder report and certification form is checklist item number three. When you submit the Fact Finder report, you will certify that you followed these eight steps in this handbook. We hope the handbook is useful. We do hope that it will help steer you towards Finding, the, um, finding a project site in your jurisdiction that is the best fit for this program. Um, thank you very much. And, and we're here to help you throughout the application process. So if you still have questions uh, about the fact finder, you can email them to your project officer, which is uh, available on our website. Uh, the project officer contact is on our website, or you can email scorp at parks.ca.gov. Thank you.